Hey everybody, we're back. Today we're going to finish up lesson one in chapter three, still talking about um, the same constant rate of change topic that we were talking about yesterday, although today we're going to build off of it. Uh, sometimes you'll get a graph that is linear and it has a constant rate of change, but then it also has a, in addition to being linear and having a constant rate of change that we talked about yesterday, it will also be what we call proportional. So a proportional linear graph is like a special version of the ones that we saw yesterday. And it has some special characteristics. It has something called a constant ratio. That's going to be the big topic today. What is a constant ratio? And then what does that mean whenever you look at it? Well, it means if you had a graph, it would start at the origin. Like here's an example. It starts at the origin, the origin right there, and it is in a straight line. Um, usually they go up, they have a positive slope. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to have one with a negative slope. All the, usually the ones you see, they start at the origin, it's a straight line, and it goes up. Perfect, right? This is an example. This is good. This is one of the special ones. It is linear, but it's also a proportional linear graph. So it's not just linear, it's proportional. <clears throat> this one is linear because it does make a line, but is this a special one that we call proportional? The answer is no. This is not an example because, look, this one does not start at the origin right here. This is not the origin. The origin is way down there. And so it is possible to be, possible to be aligned, to be a linear graph, uh, to have a constant rate of change. Like this is a constant rate of change, but this is not a constant ratio because a constant ratio is going to make it start at the origin. And so if you have a graph that doesn't start at the origin, it is not proportional, a special word that we call proportional today. Now, um, are you going to have to graph every single one of these? What if the numbers are really big, right? It's easy to tell if it's proportional or not by looking at a graph. I can just see. Does it start at the origin? Does it go in a straight line? Yeah, it's easy to see. Here, it's, it is a straight line, but it doesn't start at the origin. So no, it's not a proportional graph. What do we do when it gives you something like this, though, right? Do I want to make a graph that goes all the way up to 68 and 20 and 80? Uh, I mean, I could, but who wants to do that? Nobody wants to do that, right? Here's what we can do instead. Let me zoom in a little bit closer here where we can see this. What we can do instead is do the same stuff that we talked about yesterday. I'll give you a quick little chance to um, re uh, refresh our brains, right? Remember what we did yesterday? We looked at the pattern. Is this a consistent pattern from 0 to 5, from 5 to 10, to from 10 to 15, from 15 to 20? That is a consistent pattern, right? It's adding 5 every time. 5 to 10 is adding 5. 10 to 15 is adding 5. 15 to 20 is adding 5. Is it a consistent pattern down here with the Fahrenheit? 32 to 41, that's adding 9. 41 to 50, that's also adding 9. 50 to 59, that's adding 9. From 59 to 68, that's adding 9. And so you remember how we did this yesterday? Whenever we got done with these, we always looked at the the rates right here, the rates of change. Here it was, 9 over 5. 9 over 5. We always started with this second one, right, the one at the bottom. 9 over 5. 9 over 5. So is this linear? Yes. This is linear. And the rate of change, what was my rate of change? My constant rate, what did I have every time? I had 9 over 5, right? 9 over 5, 9 over 5, 9 over 5. The Fahrenheit went up by 9, and then the Celsius went up by 5. Now today, how do we tell, right? So far, I know this is linear, but how do I know if this has a constant ratio? What is this whole constant ratio about, right? Um, the constant ratio is, and I, I've already kind of scribbled over all these numbers, but if you look at the, don't look at my yellow, don't look at my blue, don't look at my orange. If you look at the original numbers on the table, like right here, 68 and 20, take a few of these, and divide them. Take the second combination, right? 59 and 15. Take any of these combinations you want, right here, 50 with 10. See how I'm taking the actual numbers, not the pattern, not the blue, not the orange, not the yellow. I'm taking the actual numbers. Here's a third one, 50 over 10. I could do 41 over 5, right? There's another choice. I could do 32 and 0, but I'm going to hang off on that one because I'm out of room. Take the actual numbers, and then grab a calculator. I'm just going to grab one right here. And you divide them. See if you get the same ratio, right? A ratio is a dividing problem. I'm going to do 68 divided by 20 and see what I get. 68 divided by 20 
is 3.4. So this one equals 3.4. In order for this to be a proportion, I need to have the same answer on every single one. So let's try the next one, 59 divided by 15. Does this also equal 3.4? Uh-oh, look at that. It does not. So I know right now this is not a proportion. This is 3.93 with the repeating bar. So this is not a proportion. This is probably a graph that looks something like this, right? It is a line because I had a constant rate of change, right? I had this, so it is a line, but it is not a special one that starts at the origin. It maybe starts, well, look where it starts. It starts at 32, right? <laughs> zero, 32, that was kind of a dead giveaway. The fact that it didn't have zero, zero. This started at like 32, maybe this is the number 32, and then it went up, right? I could have divided these others just to make sure 50 divided by 10, that's equals five. You see how these are, answers are all different? 3.4, 3.93, five. Here I could do 41 divided by five. 41 divided by five equals 8.2. None of these were the same. In order for it to be a proportional relationship, all of these would have had to be the same. So that's how you do it to figure out if it is a proportion. So this is linear. It had a constant rate, but this is not proportional, not a proportion. It is not. It does not start at the origin. Okay, let's look at this next one because I think this next one might be. Um, if I do the first step that we did on the last one, you can see here what is the weight counting by every time? 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80, right? I don't need to show you. Isn't that adding 20 every time? I don't need to write that on every single one. So it's adding 20. Uh, let's check out the mass down here, which they're measuring in kilograms, from 9 to 18, that's adding 9. 18 to 27, that's adding 9. From 27 to 36, that's adding 9. And so look what we have. Do we have a constant rate? Was it adding 20 every time up here? Yes. Was it adding 9 every time down here? Yes. So is this linear? Let me switch back to my other color. Yes, this is linear. Yes, it is. What is my constant rate? All right, my constant rate. Remember, you take this number on the bottom first, 9 over 20, 9 over 20, 9 over 20. My constant rate is 9 over 20. And then, is this a proportion or not? Okay, remember, when you do proportions, you're taking the actual numbers right here, 80 and 36. And I like to take the one on the bottom first. I would, I'm going to do 36 over 80, and then I'm going to do this one right here, right, 27 over 60. Now, technically, if I'm being honest with you, will it still work if you divide it the other way? Yeah. 18 over 40, but if I want to be actually true to what it should be, I'm going to take the number on the bottom, 9 over 20. But if you did 20 over 9 and you, you did them all that way, you would still end up probably with the same thing. Uh, well, it, the, the answers would be different, but you'd be able to tell if they're the same. So I'm going to do 36 divided by 80. 36 divided by 80 is 0.45, okay? 0.45, I'm gonna put a little note right here. This one is 0.45. And I'm gonna do 27 divided by 60. 27 divided by 60, boom, same thing, 0.45. If I'm gonna do the next one, 18 divided by 40, boom, same thing. All these, I'm three for three. Now I've gotta get all four, I can't just do three. It's gotta be every single one, perfect. Look at this, all of these are 0.45. So is this a proportion? Yes, this is. Proportional, yes, this is proportional. See, 0.45 on all of them. Now, just to show you, if you had divided these backwards, if you did 80 divided by 36, you would have a different answer. You would have had 2.2 with a repeating bar, but if you divided all of these in that same way, 60 divided by 27, if you divided all of them backwards, you would have ended up with the same answer all the time. 40 divided by 18, it would have been, see, it, they all would have been 2.2 with a repeating bar. Whoops, 20 divided by nine. They're all the same that way. So even if you divide it backwards, you don't do it the way you're supposed to, you'll still end up fi figuring it out the right way. Do you see the difference, right? So these were both linear. They were both had a constant rate, but the second one was proportional because when you took the actual points, the actual numbers, the actual data they gave you and divided them, we got the same thing all four times. So the second one would be a graph that looks like this, that starts at the origin and then goes up. Okay, that's really it today, guys. I'm gonna show, uh, show you just a couple more examples and then we'll get out of here. So here we are measuring the time, how many hours, maybe you leave your lights on and how much it costs you. Um, we're just gonna do a quick little comparison. The time over here is counting by, let's see, that's plus three, that's plus four, uh-oh, that's plus 12. Now don't get nervous just because these are different. Remember, I showed you that tricky one yesterday. Just because these are different doesn't mean it's not gonna work. 15 to 24, that's adding nine. 24 to 36, that's adding 12. 36 to 72, 
That's adding 36. Now, just because it says these numbers are all different doesn't mean the answer is no. Remember what we have to look at. We have to look at this, this entire thing, 9 over 3. When it's written like this, you take the number on the right first. You do this one, and then you do this one. The second combination, 8, I'm sorry, that's 12 with 4. You take the third combination, that's 36 with 12. Look at all these fractions, guys. Would they actually reduce to the same thing? Yeah, remember, 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 36 divided by 12 is 3. So these all reduce to the same fraction. So is this linear? Yes. Did it have a constant rate? Yes. Look, it's right here, 3, 3, 3. The constant rate is 3 or 3 over 1. Um, is this a proportion, though? Okay, I've scribbled all over this, but look what I had there in black marker before I erased it. I'm going to take 15 divided by 5, right? 15 divided by 5. I'm going to do 24 divided by 8, and some of you all can probably do this in your head. 36 divided by 12. 36 divided by 12. And then 72 divided by 24. Take the number on the right first and see if I get the same answer every time. And I think you would, right? 15 divided by 5, that's 3. 24 divided by 8, that's 3. 36 divided by 12, that's 3. The only one I'm a little confused about because it's kind of a bigger group of numbers is 72 divided by 24. Calculator's going to come to the rescue. Look at that. So yes, this is a proportion. So this had a constant ratio of 3, right? The ratio of this one was also 3 to 1. So the rate and the ratio were the same on that one. It doesn't happen very often that you get these as 3 and these as 3, but we did. So that one is yes, that is a proportion. It is also a linear graph. It's one of the special ones. Okay, one more, and then I promise I'll stop because I'm almost at 12 minutes here. Okay, another example. I'm looking at my time. This is how many seconds something has been going on. This is adding one, obviously, adding one, adding one. And then over here, the distance that maybe you've thrown something or you've dropped it, right? Oh, geez, I'm going to need some uh, ca calculator help. I, I'm going to try to do this in my head. This is adding 14.7. This is adding, oh, geez, I'm just going to use the calculator, 44.1 minus 19.6. If you're like me, these are really hard. This is adding 24.5. The last one, 78.4 minus 44.1. That's 34.3. Okay, those aren't fun. Now, I don't, I'm not quite able to tell yet until I compare here. 14.7 over 1. Anything divided by 1 is itself, right? Let's look at the next combination. 24.5 over 1. Uh-oh. Now, anything divided by 1 is itself. So, and then the last one, combination right here. 34.3 divided by 1. Are these the same? Is this a constant rate? Look at this. Different, different, different. So is this linear? No. If it's not linear, you can say no to everything else. You don't even have to do the others. If it's not linear, there's no constant rate. Look, see how these were all different? And then if, it, if it's not linear, there's no way it can be a proportion. So if that ever happens to you, it's automatically going to be no. Okay, last one. Time. Over here is counting by ones, right? One, two, three, four. Adding one, adding one, adding one. If you look at the right-hand side, the number of customers you help at your store. Maybe you work at a different uh, a jewelry store or a, sh uh, you know, a shoe store or something like that. Oh, 36 to 60 is plus 14. Look at this again, guys. Look what we have. 12 over 1. That one equals 12, so I'm feeling good. This one, 12 over 1. I'm feeling good. And then they snuck one in on us. Look at this. Mean. 14 over 1. Is that the same? No. Look. Good, good, bad. So is this linear? No. It did not have a constant rate. In order for this to be constant, they all would have had to have been 12, or they all would have had to have been 14. So if it is not linear and it is not constant, it is not proportional either. Okay, I hope this works for you guys. I'm going to stop the video right here. We're going to put a few questions on the McGraw-Hill site to hopefully help you practice this. Use this video, rewind it, pause it, go back and watch it some more. Email us if you have any questions. See ya.